WWE's Cody Rhodes problem, and AEW shows Monet the money. Let's follow up on the biggest news stories from the world of professional wrestling. My name's Michael, and the gimmick starts now. Before we jump into Cody Rhodes' story, I just want to talk about another story that happened this week in pro wrestling, this one involving CM Punk. Last week on Booker T's podcast, The Hall of Fame with Booker T and Brad Gilmore, the former GI bro stated on his podcast that he and CM Punk had a little backstage altercation. Now, Booker at the time did not go into any further explanation, and of course the internet wrestling community had a completely normal and rational response to this news. Over on Reddit, one commenter would say how much they love Booker T being the WWE gossip, with another comment going as far as rebranding him Booker T. But soon, new details about the scuffle emerged and shed new light on the matter. A credible source who was in the room at the time of the alleged incident said Booker's story was a mere fabrication, going as far as calling the story, quote, clickbait. That source was later to be revealed none other than Booker T himself. Booker stated he was making up the news so he could entertain his fans of his podcast. Now, I love this choice from Booker T. It's showing that he's keeping up with pro wrestling fans today. There's nothing more that we as pro wrestling fans find entertaining than arguing about unclear details on backstage reports. The fact that this story included a CM Punk was just icing on the cake. You can say a lot of things about Booker, but one of them absolutely has to be he knows what the people want. And speaking of knowing what the people want, let's move on to our main story, namely Cody Rhodes' story. Last week, Nick Nemeth, formerly known as Dolph Ziggler in the WWE, was named a new host of the Busted Open radio program. Boy, he wasted no time with the hot takes as he pointed out some flaws in Cody Rhodes' story. I appreciate this two-year story. I really do. Uh, I just think it's so funny that finishing the story isn't like the end of a storyline. It's like, no, he has to win because his dad wasn't champion. That's the story? It's not just his dad. It's what he's had to go through, too. Hasn't everybody else who wasn't a legacy in the business had to go through a bunch of stuff, too? And yes, when you think about it, those are fair points that Nick Nemeth brings up. And yes, when you apply a little bit of logic, you realize that this story might just be your standard wrestling storyline. And I understand Nick's take here, but there's just something different about Cody that the fans are really into. Whether it's the prodigal son aspect of the story or the fact that Cody dresses as Homelander, or maybe the people are just really into the song Kingdom, fans are hanging on his every word right now. Speaking of hanging on every word, Cody on Raw cut a rock style promo. Oh, what's a rock style promo? Well, it's actually quite simple. You come out and you make fun of your opponent's manhood, figuratively speaking. You throw a few derogatory name calling in there, one or two of those. Then you make fun of your opponent's genitals and then you're home free. And Cody was one Rudy Poo and eyebrow raised from Versace sending him a sleeveless sparkly shirt. And maybe that's the story that WWE is trying to tell here. Maybe the story is Cody is becoming the very thing that he hates. Because on Friday night SmackDown, Cody and Roman met face to face with both men pinky promising they would come alone. There was a carve out uh, that would allow Paul Heyman to be there to accompany Roman Reigns. And when Paul Heyman's serving looks like this, how could you not want this man near you? What I'm saying is Heyman is a generational beauty who makes you stay on the channel. You know who else is a generational beauty? All the people hit the like button below. Thanks. At the end of the promo, Roman called for Solo and Jimmy, as they were the only two Bloodline members who didn't have vacation scheduled this week. They joined Roman at his side, and the cameras panned to reveal Jay and Seth in the crowd ready to back up Cody. And this shows us something I think is very important. Cody may be the only babyface in the WWE to think, I don't know, maybe I should get some backup when taking on the Bloodline. Which is astounding because every Roman Reigns match has ended the exact same way. So much so that Roman Reigns' 2K finisher should be called Solo Does a Little Run-In and Then I Hit a Spear. So I'm glad they're showing growth with Cody, but at the same time, they're showing us that Cody is willing to lie, which isn't typical good guy behavior. Now, with only a few weeks to go before WrestleMania, do you think Cody Rhodes is going to finish the story this year? Let us know in the comments what you think. Our final story tonight is about Mercedes Monet, specifically about the money Mercedes Monet makes. It was reported that her AEW contract was an eight figure deal, which has made Monet the highest paid women's wrestler in 
history. So Bianca Belair better look out because the paidist is already putting that money to good use. When a fan tweeted out that they were enjoying Monet on AEW Dynamite, Eagle Eye commenters pointed out that the fan was watching on an old CRT television. Monet saw this and decided the fan needed an upgrade. This was a very nice gesture from Monet. And now this is the part where I have to tell you that the internet wrestling community, surprisingly, acted completely normal about this. Of course, I am lying. Some Redditors started to price check the TV, which I have to say, if that's something you do with gifts you're given personally, that's tacky. But to look up the cost of a gift between two strangers is truly unhinged behavior. I love pro wrestling as much as the next person, but maybe when you get to the point that you're looking at price comps on gifts, you might want to take a step out of the pro wrestling bubble and remember that we the fans and wrestlers are like are both human beings in the year 2024. I'm not asking a lot here. I'm just asking like, let's be like 5% more normal. We have to get this behavior to end. Speaking of end, here's a segue to the end of the video. Remember, pro wrestling is predetermined. Your life isn't. Go do something great today. And thank you all for joining us. And if you made it this far in the video, it would mean a lot to the channel if you throw us a like. It really helps with the algorithm. We'll see you next week.